Um, Valentino giving me suits, gangster suits. Um, Valentino giving me suits, gangster. Yes, sir. Y'all ready for me? Now, Death Row East. The only way that it would have been official tissue was for Suge Knight and Tupac to take care of Tupac enemies, not just in the rap game. But in the New York streets also. The New York street drug dealers, the New York street stick up kids, and especially King Tut. Tut, Tupac said in Against All Odds, that's the one who shot him during the Quad Studio robbery. And even in this letter to Desiree, where he, you know, checked her, put her in her place, or, you know, <laughs> That's another story. Tupac mentioned The Walking Dead. He mentioned Haitian Jack, Jimmy Henchman, Tut, all crossed out with R.I.P., rest in peace, next to their names. The only way for Death Row East to be official tissue was to make sure Jimmy Henchman, Haitian Jack, Tut, Dexter Isaac, et cetera, et cetera, been dealt with. That's like if Diddy, which we all know, he's in LA with Revolt and et cetera, et cetera. There was no way Diddy would have been able to do that if he ain't take care of the streets, LA streets, LA gangs, et cetera, et cetera, his ghetto pass. The only way for Death Row East was to be official tissue was for Tupac and Suge to take care of the streets of New York, the enemies, and et cetera, et cetera. Tupac's and Suge Knight. One of their last visits to New York before Vegas, it was said that they was there to handle business with the streets. Tupac and Suge Knight was offering $100,000 for the murder of Tut. Now, you have to be affiliated with New York Streets to know that. You have to be affiliated with New York Street gangs to know that. That there was a bounty on Tut Head. Tut is a known shooter, known stick-up kid, well-respected in the streets of New York, especially during the late 90s, the mid-90s. Late 80s, stick-up kid, well-known, well-respected in the streets. He lay his gun, he lay that gun game down. There was no way Tupac and Suge could have maintained the reputation of Death Row East in New York if they ain't deal with Tut. Not just Eric B, because Eric B had street clout, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, we know this, but Tupac and Suge had to handle business in the streets of New York. Not only was they were a bounty placed on Tut Head, but Tupac, the Outlaws, a few of them from Jersey, Napoleon, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Like I said before, it was early, earlier videos that I put up. Tupac was just literally throwing out money in the streets of New York in his last days in New York City. I need y'all to drop a comment below, man, and let me know and hit the bell ain't hard to tell. What it is tell. that the East Coast drug dealers got the niggas as extortion. I came and fucked up everything. Because I dissed the niggas in the Daily News. They put it out on me. 
When the niggas tried to rob me, which is all they wanted to do, I knew what they told me. That's what they was telling me. Pop. They was sending me messages through my closest road dog saying, Pop, why did you fight them? They was just coming to take your shit. But I wasn't letting nobody take my shit as Biggie had just took my shit. That's what, but you can listen to it. That's what, that, that was his success too. Cause he took I'm, like listen, West Coast sound. We flipped and, it. And I playing, told him that. I told him know, that I trained. He was supposed to be, he was supposed to be thug life. Mm -hmm. All while he was coming up, I used to let him come on stage with me. He was screaming thug life. Hey, cause I he was like, I hate Canadian. Brooklyn. I hate yeah. New York. I'm mind with them niggas puppy cheating me. Woo, woo, woo. All of a sudden he blew up and he wasn't saying thug life. So I started getting mad, and I was seeing the niggas play, so he was hugging me, yo, Pac, yo, thank you, he's the only nigga that woo, woo, but he, and he told me, like, about a week before I got shot, he knew the nigga that was shot me, and he was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga, you know me, you know, we walked in with the nigga that shot me, and I ended up shooting me, he's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga, because I knew the nigga too, he was my mm -hmm. co defender. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later, and we didn't talk. Ne the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? The next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like mm -hmm. I'ma come see you. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie homeboy shot you. Cause they bragging, they telling they niggas in jail, yo, we just got pot, woo, woo, woo. And my cousin was in jail in New York, cause I got family out there. Mm -hmm. He sitting right there while the niggas get in the car going, yo, my homeboys just jacked that nigga Tupac. So that's how I knew, shot me, what happened and everything. Now the 100K, the $100,000 on King Tut, Walter Johnson's head, you know, it was because he was a well-known street gunner. You know, in October 24th, 1996, he thought he was going to walk out of Brooklyn courthouse, He, you know, for beating a case that he was facing. And the only reason why Tut is not deceased right now and didn't get shot or get his wig pushed back is because the U.S. Marshals and the feds met him in the Brooklyn house and he was facing... About 12 federal charges. Y'all know the story. He was facing about 12 federal charges. Not only was he facing the federal charges and got sentenced. But when he got sentenced, he was the one of the first New Yorkers to get hit with the three strikes you route. Tut. He was known for robbing the F train in New York. He was known for robbing buses. You know, in the in the late 80s, he even robbed his mother's Jehovah Witness Hall at gunpoint. I mean, this was a straight up street dude. You know, a straight up shooter. No joke. When I heard about the 100K on Tut's head, that was like for a body for a street dude. That's a lot of bread, bro. Usually you hear about 25K, 50K, regular degular shit. But Suge Knight and Tupac had to been very serious. Just like how Stretch got his wig pushed back. Y'all heard what Reggie White, y'all heard it from him. Just like how Stretch got his wig pushed back. Tut had that bounty on his head and I'm pretty sure... If he didn't get arrested on October 24th, 1996, he would have got he would have got dealt with. Even 50 Cent said it in many men. He got a kite that Tuck got not. The feds ain't know much. When Pac got shot, he ain't gonna spell it out for you a thousand times. Even in the original Machiavelli credits written by Tupac, he mentioned Tut for shooting me. It was serious, bro. I'm not asking nobody if Tut. Had a bounty on his motherfucking head. I'm telling you, he had a bounty on his motherfucking head. I was there, bro. You had to be affiliated with New York street gangs to know this. You had to been in the streets to know this. And it is not cool for you so-called Machiavelli channels, Tupac channels that claim you love Pac to give Big Stretch Brother Majesty a platform. I don't call that representing Pac. Who gives a fuck about bum-ass majesty? Who gives a fuck about them niggas, bro? 
They jewelry is dirt. They cars is dirt. Their lifestyles is dirt. Why would the fuck you give these niggas a platform? This is what I'm saying. I stress to y'all. This is why we are the number one Pac channel. This is why we are the greatest Pac channel of all time. I would never put Pac enemies on a platform on Discretion TV. That's not cool, bro. You know, the 100K on Tut Head, it was motherfucking serious. Tut even had a, he shot a cop, an undercover cop in Brooklyn. You know, they tried to shoot Tut one time while Tut was with his son. And they thought they had him. 